This is a brief introduction to working in ArcMap. The first thing you'll want to do is start ArcMap from the Start menu in Windows. So just go to Start and then ArcGIS and you should see the ArcMap program in there. And then once it's started it should look like the window that we have here. So with any new software when you're exploring and getting used to what's there, the first thing I would recommend that you do is look through the file, um, the main menu. So file, edit, view, and so on. Just just explore it. Just what are in those menus. Get a sense of what's there because you'll probably want to go back and look at it again later. You should also just hover over some of the tools and look at the tooltips and just get a sense of what are they called, what might they be for. And uh, this shouldn't take long. It doesn't have to be a big tedious process, but just something to kind of familiarize yourself with things to begin with. One of the first things that you'll want to do, I think, is... Uh, realize or notice that there is a catalog what they call a shy pane so if you hover over this and then you can tell it to stay open by clicking the little thumb tack this is kind of a miniature version of our catalog it's, it doesn't have all of the functionality of our catalog but uh, it has a lot of it and for most uses it's probably going to be everything that you need so you can uh, add a connection to a folder just like you would in our catalog, uh, if you don't see your drive or your folder that you want to work with there, then you can connect to it there. And then you can explore files just like you would in our catalog. One of the first things that is really useful to know is that you can drag and drop feature classes right onto the data view of ArcMap. And so this has now been added to my map. Really handy. If you, uh, for some reason, you don't want to do it that way, you can also come up to the uh, menu here and collect the click the add data tool and you can add one or more layers I can just uh, control click here to select more than one layer and add all of them at once to my map and one thing you might notice well actually two things you might notice one is that the symbology that's chosen is done by the software uh, it's fairly random uh, it almost certainly won't look as the way that you want or look very good uh, the second thing you might notice is that it automatically has recognized points, lines, and polygons and raster and ordered them uh, from top to bottom in the table of contents on the left. So points are on top of the drawing or, as, or you can think of them as being closer to you as the view map viewer and the uh, lines are beneath those, the polygons are beneath those, and the raster is beneath that. So it's kind of just a handy thing that it does automatically for you you can turn these layers on and off just by checking or unchecking the box next to it uh, you can reorder them so if I wanted to for example move vegetation so it's at the top and it's drawing on top of the points and the lines then I can drag it up and down that way you can um, one thing that you may want to do almost immediately with any new project it's a really good idea to do this is to go to the map document properties under file and look at the default geodatabase. Now um, I happen to have mine set already to one that I want to use but the default that you're probably going to find is something that's not going to be intuitive or obvious to you. It probably will be on your C drive under your username, under my documents, in a folder called ArcGIS and this is what ArcMap does by default. What they're trying to do is to, um, it's meant to be convenient in that any new layer that you create during the course of your project will automatically be stored in this default ge geodatabase. And that's meant to be a good thing. I'm not so crazy about it just because uh, if I forget to set it to one that I want it to use, then I may forget where it actually put it. Not only that, but if it uses the same geo uh, default geodatabase for say two or three or four different projects that I happen to use if I forget to set it then it's dumping all of the data from all of those projects into this one big default geodatabase and it gets to be a bit of a mess. All of that's to say that when you create a new map document it's a good practice to create a new geodatabase for that project and you can do that in the catalog pane or in our catalog just by right clicking and selecting new geodatabase and then setting that browsing to it in the default geodatabase here so you just click on the icon on the left you can browse to the location for it I've already done it in this case select it say add and so now that will be stored as my default 
Also notice that underneath that, make sure that the box is checked for storing relative path names so that if you happen to move your project to another drive or another folder, uh, it, will, it won't confuse it as long as they're all in the same relative location that they were to begin with. You can click OK. And so now we have our default geodatabase. And you'll notice that in our catalog over on the right here, there's a little house symbol next to my geodatabase. That means that that's the default. And that's what it will automatically go to anytime I want to add more data to my project. So I hope that makes sense. But it's something that um, it's not intuitive to begin with. And I really wanted to make sure I pointed that out early on. So we've added some data to our map. Uh, using dragging and dropping and using the Add Data tool. We can turn layers on and off. We can drag them up and down. Um, we can look at our, our list of layers and the table of contents in different ways. The way I'm looking at it right now, if you look at the, the top of the table of contents, the icon on the left, is it's listing them according to the drawing order. So the ones that are meant to be closest to you as the viewer are at the top of the list. The ones that are at the bottom are at the bottom of the list. Makes sense. The next um, icon over is to list by source. And what that does is you may actually have map data in your map that's coming from many different sources. It might They might be on different drives or in different folders. Uh, some might be coming from the internet. And so it will list the map layers according to where the, the data is coming from, which can be really useful when you're working on a project with a lot of different layers. The next icon over is to list by visibility. So if I've turned off a layer, like in this case I've turned off elevation, it will list that separately because it's not visible. Another icon next to the right is to list them according to whether they are selectable or not. So you can make it so that some layers are selectable or not selectable. And you can also set the options for the table of contents. If you want to make the, the swatches that or the patches that it uses to, to show things in the legend, you can make those larger or smaller if you want. So let's go back to our original view. Some other things that you should be aware of. You can look at the attribute table. Here, if I right click, I can open the attribute table for this particular data set, and you'll notice that it's automatically docked it to the bottom of my screen. Um, you can move that around if I want. I can separate it so that it's floating. I can dock it in different parts. Uh, often it's, it's convenient to dock it at the bottom. And when you do this, uh, there's a couple of things I wanted to point out. One is that you'll notice that it's covering a part of my map in the upper part of the window. I can actually collect the full extent and even though I have quite a small window now for my map, it will zoom out to make sure that I can see all of the data that's included in my map. I can select uh, an item on the map. So let's, uh, let's use the zoom tool here to zoom in. So I can just left click and drag to, to zoom in on a, an area, just like you would in a lot of different programs. So let's zoom in to, let's say, this area here, kind of near campus. And I can use the Select tool from the Tool menu and select, in this case, um, one of the points from the healthcare. And if I go down to my table, I can select the Show Selected Records. And there's only one selected here. So it turns out that the one that I just selected happens to be the Barton Place Long-Term Care Facility. So I'm trying to show you here that you're connecting um, the attribute table to the map, or it's done, it's done for you, so that you can select things in the table and see them on the map and vice versa. So for example, if I clear that selection and show all of them again, I could just as easily scroll through my list here and then say I'm going to look for the hospital for sick children. And if I select that in my attribute table, it's also selecting it in my map. I can right click on the layer in my table of contents and say selection, zoom to selected feature. If I'm not sure where it is or I want to just zoom in on it, I can do that. And I can unselect that. And I can use the panning tool to move around my map this way. I can uh, zoom out to the full extent. And if I close my attribute table, that'll give us a little bit more room to work with here. So 
Naturally, this map isn't looking its best right now. Why don't we work with the symbology a little bit to try and make it look a little better? So you can just click on the symbol in the table of contents that you want to change. In this case, it's these uh, green circles. If I just left click on that, I will get the symbol selector. And I can, uh, there's a lot of different uh, symbols that I can choose from that are preset that come with it. If I scroll down the list here, you'll see that there's one conveniently for hospitals. So we can uh, set the, the symbol to the hospital symbol, and that will automatically change them all on my map. I can change the size of them, of course, if I want as well. Um, if we zoom in a little bit, maybe it'll be a little, a little easier to see. And I can change my vegetation to, say, this nice green here. And my roads, I can change them to, say, something like major roads. So that can all be done just by clicking on the individual symbols. I want to point out to you, though, that you can also do it by right-clicking on a particular layer and selecting properties. And there's several different tabs available in the layer properties. For now, we're just going to look at the symbology one. And you'll see that it's uh, listed here as being a single symbol. And I can click this and change just like I did. It's just a different way of accessing the same thing as we were doing before. Um, I can change it for all of them right there. Or I can, say, go to Categories and assign different values based on the attribute in the table. In this case, this data set comes with a cartography code um, that's just called Cardo. And if I add all of the values here, these are all the different possible values available for it. And we can take this and change any one of these. So I could change this to, say, black. Uh, this one to red, uh, this one to um, a thicker red. And so what this is going to do is go through the entire data set and match the attributes in the table with the symbol that I've selected for each one and apply it. And so now we have more than one different symbol. I just chose these rather randomly, but it worked out all right. Um, so we can set the symbology according to attributes within one table. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention is that you can, um, if you like the, the scale and the extent that you're working in, let's say I wanted to set the scale up here to uh, 24,000, and I'm going to pan around until I've got the map exactly where I want it. Say it's something like this, and I say, you know what, I'd really like to be able to return to this exact scale and extent some other time. I can save this as a bookmark. So if I create bookmark, I could say this is whatever I want to call it, say downtown, and save that. And then so I can go off and do other work, change it to other extents, work at many different uh, views of this. But then if I want to go back to exactly the same scale and extent I had before, you can go into bookmarks, select downtown, and it'll go right back to where it was before. Other things you can do, for example, is I could change the scale to something else. Let's say it's going to be, let's just type one in. I'll go to 50,000. And then if I wanted to go to the display I had previous to that, I can also use the back arrow and it will go to the, the display I had previous to that. Um, I can change to the layout view. And so now it's showing me what the layout looks like as a sheet of paper with my data frame in the middle of it. I can change the size of this if I want, just dragging it around. Um, I can insert a neat line around the project. In this case, I'll do it around the margins. I can insert things like a north arrow. Let's just pick something here. I can move that around in my project. And you can do that with a lot of different things, the legend and so on. You can resize them. You can align them. Let's just, uh, I'll add in a scale bar here. And I'll select the properties so that I'm selecting uh, kilometers. Say OK, and I've added that to my map. I can move it around, and if I want to, I can zoom in on the, the sheet of paper as opposed to the, the map data and look at that and say, OK, you know what? I'm going to drag this so that it's a round number, something like, let's see, uh, 
you'd have to kind of play with it a bit. Uh, let's try there, two kilometers, that's good. And if I want to, I can align these two things together by right clicking, saying align to the bottom and zoom out to see my whole page again. So this is really just a quick introduction to uh, ArcMap. I hope this has been helpful and uh, good luck getting started with it.